we're talking about the Mike Austin swing today. What better a place to start than at the beginning, and that's the grip. The, the grip. I mean, it's the only time we're actually you know, touching the club. We're touching the grip. It's where we place our hands on the grip. What we're looking at here is, Steve, I want to go through some, some faulty grips okay. before we get to a correct one. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. So let's show what a, what a strong grip would look like for the camera. Okay. Just tweak your hands into a strong position here. Okay. So I'm going okay. to I'm going away to the right. right. Okay. Uh huh. And so now if I if I straighten my palms out here, they're not uh, pointing up and down the fairway now, are they? Right. Okay. Okay. Let's go to a weak grip. Okay. So I'm we'll gonna, get back I'm to go, neutral here in a second. I'm go here now, and now my I'm still not facing up and down the fairway, right? Okay. So okay. now, Steve, this is a weak grip. Okay? okay. Now, how do we put this grip together? What we're looking at now, strong versus weak, mm -hmm. right hand under versus right hand over. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how the grip gets, it doesn't get taken serious enough. You start talking about all the positions in your swing, mm -hmm. you know, you, the, the pivot, you know, the throwing motion, mm -hmm. um, all those good things. And then the, the grip isn't covered enough. It's, it's very important. And let's start with just some basic maneuvers here. Steve, just put your left hand on the club there okay. for a second there. This is how I like to do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it out here with the right hand on the shaft. I'm gonna lay it across the base of my, of my fingers here, at the base of the pinky, running slightly diagonal so that it ends up in the second pad of my index, and then wrap it around that way. Okay, now what you see when Steve makes that move, mm -hmm. you'll see this little line between his left thumb mm -hmm. and forefinger, and that line is not going out to his left shoulder, nor is it really going towards his chin. When he puts that club on the ground, it's going to go out towards his right shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where we want to see that connection point. That left thumb is slightly to the right of center mm -hmm. of the golf club, which puts this line about the right shoulder. That's the proper left sure, hand sure. grip. So I like to call that one o'clock. A right. one o'clock thumb, as opposed to, remember Hogan later in his career, because he was a hook the ball a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So he went to a weaker thumb, which we'd call 12 o'clock. We would call neutral one o'clock, right? Right. Paul Azinger, two o'clock, mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. All right. There's, our, there's my one o'clock thumb again. Okay. I'm in the fingers. Okay. Before we get to what a stronger weak grip would do to mm -hmm. the Mike Austin swing, let's complete yeah. a neutral grip here. Okay. okay. So, so now I'm coming in with my right hand in the fingers again, like I'd be picking up a pail of water by the handle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm overlapping the pinky here, so we're advocating that an overlapping grip as opposed to an interlocking grip. Right, and we can even go, you know, we don't like the interlocking, the interlocking grip mm -hmm. as it, it will hinder some of the movements that we'd want you to make. Mm -hmm. Actually, the 10-finger grip would be a better grip. It's not bad. It's not, not nearly as bad as people have made it out to right. be over the years. It will work just fine, especially if you're just learning how to do this. Okay, so back to the overlap again. Again, I'm in the fingers. Now, when I put that down, I'll point out again where my V is going and my left thumb position here. Right. So since, since Steve has placed his right hand on the club, directly opposite the left hand, you will see this line between the right thumb and forefinger in a parallel position mm -hmm. to the left. So this V, or this line, is going to go just outside his right shoulder as this one is going just to his right shoulder. It's a mm -hmm. parallel move there. And now when I open up the hands, Now, the back of my left hand is at the flag and the palm of my right hand is at the flag. So, my, ho my hands are opposing each other. And for some people, this, it, it's very simple to place your hands on the club in this fashion. It also gives us the most maneuverability right, sure. to make a sure. better golf swing. The basis of the Mike Austin swing is this, is this pendulum swing again here. And we want to grip it in such a way that we get the heck out of the way of that motion. We don't want to impede and get in the way of that motion and slow it down. We're not interested in slowing anything down as we go through. We're interested in speeding it up. Okay, on that topic, then let's talk about grip size. Grip size, sure. Now, I've got a mid-size grip on here, and i got pretty big hands. As do I, yes. But I don't have a jumbo grip, and neither do you. And that's what I'm finding with a lot of my students is they're making a big error when it comes to grip size. Some people have... You know, they've been, uh, it's been recommended to them that they get a bigger grip as they get older. And other people, they've got normal sized hands, but they've got shorter fingers. Mm -hmm. You seen that too? Mm -hmm. So what I'll see when they hold, they hold up this, you know, this left hand and their pinky only comes, you know, halfway around. And now when they try to swing it through, boy, it's loose. Have you seen that too? Absolutely. 
But I think the big misconception mm -hmm. going from a, you know, like you said, the trend mm -hmm. is to go to this bigger grip because it's maybe it's a arthritic grip, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it feels like it feels more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're mm -hmm. used to holding a baseball right, bat or right, a broom right. with a thicker handle. Yeah. But the fact is the bigger that grip gets, mm -hmm. the slower you are going to swing and the, the less release we're going to mm -hmm. see this motion at the here. bottom of your swing. Sure. That bigger grip will hinder that release, That's correct? Right. That's right. We're just going to slow this down. We're just interested in making that go fast and getting all the pendulum action we can get out of the wrist. Yeah, so if, if you were to take a lesson, and the, one of the first things Steve and I would look at would be probably your golf clubs and probably your grip, mm -hmm. after we talked about maybe some issues, maybe a back problem or knee problem, we're gonna look at your grip. And if we see, if we're doing a lesson on track, man, mm -hmm. some issues where taking your grip size down to a smaller grip size would mm -hmm. help, mm -hmm. we're gonna recommend that right away. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, we've covered the grip. Well, yeah, we've covered the grip. We've worked our way to some posture, okay. alignment, mm -hmm. the dress position issues. And, you know, some of these aren't going to be, once again, world changing, but they are important in some of the things that we do in regards to the Mike Austin swing mm -hmm. and making the swing as efficiently as we can. Mm -hmm. So you've got a driver in your hand here. Yeah. So Now, there are some subtle differences, aren't there? Well, absolutely. Okay. Okay, I've got the driver here. So got Steve, the alignment sticks. That's right. We got our alignment sticks down. First thing we're going to see here with Steve, let's, let's just go just quickly into some, mm -hmm. some posture aspects before right. we put the club down. Okay. Let's get, let's get our posture correct. Okay, so, so if I'm standing. How, right. How much are we going to incline from the hip and ball? Okay, we're going to go about 30 degrees. And notice as I do this, if I were to just do it this way, I fall over. So I've got weight going over my toes this way. So I need weight going back this way, which is going to be the buttocks is going to be protruding a little bit behind me to keep me counterbalanced. Something like that. Okay. So now how, what I, yeah, how are we going to know what 30 degrees is or feels like to a, you know, an individual just wanting to do this at home? Well, that really, to, to me, I really like to practice this in front of a full length mirror as often as possible and just get the feeling of what 30 degrees is like. But I'll tell you what I notice is when I hang, at 30 degrees, my arms are allowed to hang straight down from the sh from the shoulder socket. That's right. I'm going to get about, for me, about a seven inch gap from this club to my thighs. And I went to the same angle, that static measurement might be six inches or five inches. And you might be eight since you're a little taller than me. When you just hang over at the same angles, the measurement will be a little bit bigger, right? Okay. Okay. So, so that's we, what I'm feeling. That's right. So we know mm -hmm. we're inclining at more or less 30 degrees. That's kind of what we're going to be looking like. Show mm -hmm. me, just for sake of argument, show me 60 degrees. Okay. And that just looks wrong, right? I think we would hopefully see enough golf or, or play out through that just wouldn't feel right. Sure. And I'd be, you know, having to swing incorrectly to get yeah. the club around me. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things we're talking about with in mm -hmm. relation to the Mike Austin swing sure. is comfort. You mm -hmm. will feel more generally comfortable doing the things that we do mm -hmm. versus another way. Okay. Now I'll see people more often just standing straight up like this. Not true. Straight That's not up. very athletic though, is it? No, and, and if I'm standing up too tall, it's going to encourage me to go around on this plane oh. instead of down to the ball, right? Yeah, and we'll get to that later. Okay. Okay. So we have this 30 degree incl inclination. Okay. So at this point, just in, in relation to our width of stance with our driver. Let's yes. get to that next. Sure. Well, I found that there's a magic distance that's personal to me, and I think it could be a little, little different to everybody. And I'm basing the center of my heels on a driver out to my hip bones. Sure. And I'm not going wider than that because I'm going to have a hard time shifting my weight after that. This is super important. There's so many people. This is probably one of the most common things that, that men golfers will do especially ones that really want to hit the ball a long way. The first thing they'll do is go like this, and then they go like this. And that's, the, that's one of the most common things we'll see. And the disadvantage of that, of having, as you'll be seeing as we go along here, is I'm under control here. I can actually make a weight shift, and I can show you demonstrable proof that I'm on a one-foot balance. Right. Now... This feels about as far as I can go right here. If I start to tiptoe back, OK, 
Okay, now I'm wider. I'm about 18 inches wide now. It's hard to keep that seven circle. I'm, I'm, fa I'm falling back. Right. And the reason for that is my navel area, which is the center of my body's mass, cannot get over on top of my heel into a balanced position here. So I can start to tiptoe. Now, here I'm good. Here I'm starting to struggle. Here I pick this foot up now. So it's going to leave me stuck on my back foot. Okay, let's take you the other way. Do the same thing with a little wider stance than we would, okay. would want to see. Okay. This is pretty common wide stance that I see people take, but it's too wide for me. Okay, go into that impact position. Okay. Okay. Now I want you trying to get your weight all the way to your left foot. Well, the only way I could do it is this way. That's right. You would have to come off that axis point. That's right. To get to a fully balanced That's position right. on the so left side. That's right. So we're looking for, and, and this goes back to the stance width again, which we're covering right now. We're looking for the spine to swing in a pendulum in this manner. The wider my stance gets, you can see this on a lot of good golfers too. Now the only way that I can move my balance from one foot to the other is by swinging the spine in a Frankenstein walk manner, which would be like a dinosaur this way. <laughs> now I'm in balance, but now my head's rocking from side to side and my navel's not moving at all. So I don't have any kind of base of power to hit into. So it's bad, bad news there. So for me, and I showed you how to test it for me, uh, my heels are really no, don't, don't ever get wider than about 13 inches. Okay. I can be a little wider at the toes. Now Mike was 14 inches and 18 inches. I think he was a little taller than me. I think he was about six, three. Yeah. He was a big guy. So that's about 13 inches at the heels for me. Real easy to just keep a plastic ruler in your bag and you can set the ruler down and be at 12 inches or 13 inches or mm -hmm. whatever. You're a little taller. You might be 14, 15 inches at the heels at your widest. It's, My tendency mm -hmm. would to get is, is to get sure. wider than that. Sure. It, it maybe comes from a basketball background sure. you know, playing defense. But sure. And and that's what they tell you. Oh, you want yeah. to be athletic at a dress. Yeah. Which I don't what, like that term our, at all. What's our phrase? Or our phrase is mobility, not stability. That's right. We don't want stability like a sumo wrestler trying to be stable. We're not interested in doing that. We're interested in taking the center of our mass and being able to freely swing it from side to side because that gives us all kinds of good stuff that happens throughout the whole swing when we're able to do it. It gives us plane. It gives us efficient weight shift. It gives us steady head position. I mean, the list is, is very long when it comes to the reason we want to move in this manner.